Welcome to the Derek Barge Team A. Here at Associated Terminals, your personal safety is not just a priority, but a core value. Above everything, it is our expectation that all work will be performed in a safe and efficient manner so that all team members return home healthy and unharmed. Every person on any Associated Terminals worksite has the authority to shut any job down if there's a belief that the job is unsafe or misunderstood. It is expected that team members will utilize this stop work authority in order to prevent any significant incident. With this in mind, let's familiarize you with the location as well as go over a few safety basics and hazards you need to be aware of. PPE. Before departing to any associated terminal's midstream facility, whether it be a dock, a boat, a derrick barge, or a warehouse, you must utilize all required personal protective equipment, or PPE. At all times while aboard this location, PPE requirements include company-issued uniform, protective eyewear, the hard hat, a U.S. Coast Guard approved Type 5 personal flotation vice, and steel toe boots. Hearing protection must be worn in high noise areas. These areas are marked with signs. Gloves will be provided by the company as well as protective clothing, respirators, face shields, and other specialized PPE as required by the job. It is expected that personal protective equipment will be utilized at all times. Security requirements and accessing crew boat services. If accessing a midstream location from either the Port of South Louisiana at Globalplex or the Associated Terminals of St. Bernard facilities, you will be required to present your TWIC card or be accompanied by someone who has a TWIC card. All employees are required to secure a TWIC card with the company providing financial assistance. If you have applied for a TWIC card and have not yet received it, you will be required to present your ID to the gate security and be accompanied by someone with a TWIC card. When traveling on any associated terminal sites, there is a speed limit of 12 miles per hour. Please note that train tracks and railroad activity are present on many associated terminal sites. Please take caution when crossing railroad tracks, either by car or by foot. Also be aware of pedestrians who may or may not be in pedestrian approved pathways. Remember, pedestrians always have the right of way. Crew boat safety. If you are accessing crew boat services at any of a number of other locations, please note the following safety tips. When driving over a levee, either coming to work or leaving, take the time to ensure that there is no vehicle traveling over the levee from the opposite direction. Assume that one is and travel slowly until you are able to see the opposite side of the levee. When parking in the parking lot, do not block other vehicles, ramps, or gangways, and please remove any items of value or place them where they cannot be easily seen. Pay attention to potential hazards in the parking area. These include slip hazards such as trash or other debris, as well as unlevel ground. Pay attention to any unsafe conditions when accessing gangways or other work areas. Report any items of concern to your immediate supervisor. To reach our midstream derrick barges, you will be traveling by crew boat. Always make sure you have required PPE, including your personal flotation device, secured before boarding a crew boat. Do not wear backpacks. Rather, remove the backpack, handing it to a buddy while you board the vessel. This allows for you to maintain three points of contact at all times. Watch out for trip hazards and slippery patches when boarding and disembarking from the crew boats. Always board with three points of contact. Ensure that the boat is stationary before attempting to board or get off. While on board, either sit inside the cabin or stand with three points of contact at all times while holding the rails. Do not move about while the boat is in motion. Look for waves from ships or from other vessels, as these could cause the vessel to become unsteady prior to boarding. Finally, remember that the captain is in charge at all times. If you have any issues while aboard any crew boat, report this to your supervisor. Derrick Barge Access Points Each derrick barge has three access points, starboard, port, and stern. When getting off the crew boat to either the port or stern access points, pay close attention to the landing area as well as the shifting cable which travels across the access point. Always go under the cable. Never attempt to hurdle the cable. If you cannot safely access from the port or the starboard side, advise your supervisor or the boat captain to try to access the barge from the stern. When boarding the derrick barge, it is important to observe any operations in the area in which you are accessing. This includes any crane operations that may put you in the swing path of the crane. Now that you have boarded the derrick, let's go over several key areas aboard the vessel. Key Areas of Derrick Barge 
Once aboard, you will likely head straight to the crew shack. Lockers are provided for all personnel signed. Employees should bring their own locks to secure items stored. Also, a refrigerator is provided to store any perishable items. Also located in each crew quarters are restroom facilities, information boards, the crane manager's office, a computer for company use, as well as a change area. The crew shack should be maintained with the highest care. Trash should be discarded, any dishes washed, and food properly disposed. The next area to go over is the main deck of the barge. This is the primary working area on the location. You will notice the following items on the deck at all locations. Winch systems, mobile equipment, crane buckets, shifting cables, barge access points, storage areas and containers, below deck entrances, manhole covers, hatch covers, as well as the crane pedestal and the crane. Each deck area has associated risks. Let's go over a few of these. Crane swing path. Depending on the orientation of the barge, the crane will either swing over the main deck or to the stern of the barge. It is important to recognize the swinging of the crane when working on the main deck. Never work or walk under the crane's bucket when it is in motion, as cargo can fall out causing the potential of a significant injury. The crane operator must be notified should you be required to work in the area of the swing path so that crane operations can cease. Crane access. If you are required to access the crane, do not enter the area to access the ladder to the crane until the crane stops moving. Mobile equipment. Mobile equipment is stored on the deck and is moved often. If you're working on the deck in the area where mobile equipment is to be moved, ensure that you discuss this with the equipment operator to ensure he is aware of your location and or you move out of the danger area before equipment movement begins. Never approach a piece of mobile equipment being operated from the rear or from any other blind spots. If the operator cannot see you, he cannot avoid you. Pay close attention to and avoid any pinch points when approaching a piece of equipment. Note that only certified equipment operators are allowed to operate machinery. The only exception to this is for equipment operator trainees under direct supervision of a certified operator are allowed to move equipment. Winch systems. Each winch system is equipped with a notification alarm which signals when it is to become operational. When hearing the alarm, all personnel should clear all exposed cable areas. Winch operators are instructed to ensure the work areas are clear prior to engaging the winch, but all other deck personnel should move out of the areas when the alarm is sounded. No one is allowed to operate winches unless they have received proper on-the-job training. Barge access points. Barge access points are used frequently to board the crane barge or barges placed alongside of the derrick barge. When utilizing the barge access, workers should ensure they safely use the stairs to the access platform. Also, extreme caution should be used when exiting the rig or coming back to the rig. Pay attention to the shifting cable which travels across the access point. The height of the cable will vary, so it is important that you always notice this when using the barge access point. Storage areas and containers. These areas are utilized to store tools and supplies. These areas should be maintained in an organized and efficient manner. When entering storage areas, pay close attention to potential housekeeping issues on the deck, as well as any potential items that could fall. General deck conditions. When working on the deck, pay attention to any number of potential slip or trip hazards. These could include any residue cargo, moisture, petroleum products, rigging, or trash that could pose a hazard to the walking surface. Any trash or improperly stowed rigging, tools, or other items should be picked up. Likewise, any unsafe conditions arising from slippery surfaces should be cleaned immediately. All trash should be discarded in the proper location. Pay attention to any manhole covers as well as cargo covers on the main deck. Avoid stepping on these. If you must step on a manhole cover, visually ensure it is properly seated. PPE is required at all times and PFDs are required anytime you are on the deck. PFDs may be removed when below deck, inside the handrail area adjacent to the crane as well as inside the crane. Additionally, PFDs do not need to be worn while in the crew shack. Below deck. Each midstream derrick barge has below deck storage areas which also house generators. These areas too have associated risks. High noise area. 
Below deck in the generator room is considered a high noise area and hearing protection should be worn while in this area. Earplugs are normally located at the top of the stairwell from the deck to the generator area. Electrical safety. As the generators are used to generate power for the location, there are a number of high voltage areas that are clearly marked. Only qualified personnel are allowed to open any panels or control boxes. Report any damaged or worn electrical components to your crane manager. Never attempt to solve an electrical issue unless you have received the appropriate company provided training. Slip and trip hazards. When walking on the graded surfaces below deck, pay attention to any trip hazards such as hoses or other items in walking areas. Also, pay attention to any potential slip hazards related to moisture or petroleum products on the grating. Carbon monoxide risks. Oxygen sensors are located in the generator rooms. Employees should inspect and test these when entering these areas. If these are not operating properly, you should report this to your supervisor so that these can be replaced. Confined spaces. Permit required confined spaces are clearly marked. Never enter a permit required confined space without a permit or without a competent person. All permit required confined spaces must be tested for air quality and oxygen before entry. Never enter a permit required confined space without it being tested and approved by a competent person. Location of escape hatches. In the event you are required to exit the lower deck for an emergency, note that you should immediately exit using the stairs provided. In the event the stairs are blocked, you can utilize the emergency escape hatches, which are located on the port and starboard sides of the rig. These can be accessed by ascending the platform, opening the door, and exiting to the barge access area. You should then move to your muster station once exiting the area. The crane and crane access. When ascending the steps to enter the engine room on the crane, ensure that you keep one hand on the hand rail. Pay attention to any potential debris or foreign substances. When entering the cab, ensure the lights are on to ensure proper vision. Again, pay attention to any housekeeping issues that may cause slip or trip hazards. E-Room Located in this area is the E-Room, which contains numerous electrical components. Only qualified personnel are allowed to enter this room. No exceptions. Emergency Procedures if an emergency situation occurs while you are on board a derrick barge, it is crucial that you know and understand proper emergency procedure. First things first, locate the muster station. This is where all personnel and visitors must report to in an emergency situation unless they have specific emergency response responsibilities. It is important that you report to the muster station as soon as possible so a head count can be taken and all persons can be accounted for. In the event of a fire aboard the location, it is expected that trained crew members will attempt to control small fires utilizing the fire extinguishers provided. Hence, it is important to know the location of all fire extinguishers. If required to fight a small fire, ensure you are utilizing the proper fire extinguisher for the job. If the fire becomes too large to fight, you should report to your muster station for evacuation from the location. Person overboard. A person going overboard is one of the single most serious emergencies that can occur on board one of our vessels. If you see a person go overboard, keep eyes on that person at all times. The river moves fast, and it is important that you keep visual contact with the person in the water at all times. While maintaining visual contact, notify others as quickly as possible. A second spotter will join you to maintain visual contact with the person overboard. While maintaining visual contact, assist as directed with the proper rescue equipment, whether it be a flotation ring or another piece of rescue equipment. All locations are equipped with flotation rings as well as rescue poles. Rings are mounted on the rear of the crew shacks with life poles located nearby. Always know the location of these rescue items. Likewise, in case of injury, first aid kits are located in the crew quarters along with an AED. All personnel will be trained on first aid procedures. However, if you have not attended first aid class and do not know how to properly use this equipment, find out and know who does. Also, know the location of the Stokes basket in the event a coworker requires it. These are typically stored below deck. Other possible emergency situations include, but are not limited to, spills, collisions, and falls from heights. In these and all other emergencies, if you do not have a specific emergency response responsibility, you must report to the muster station. 
environmental and spill responsibilities. All garbage generated on the location must be properly disposed of. Normal garbage, such as plastics and food, can be bagged and disposed of. Other items, such as petroleum products, oily rags and pads, must be disposed of in properly marked location. Spilled cargoes must also be cleaned and disposed of as directed by the crane manager. At no point in time should any garbage or petroleum products be thrown into the river or the environment. You will receive training relative to your responsibilities on the spill response team for your location. Should you ever notice a spill, you should immediately report it to your crane manager. All spills involving petroleum products must be reported to the crane manager immediately. Incidents. All personnel should report any type of incident or near miss to the crane manager. Regardless of how minor an event may appear, it must be reported and investigated. Lessons learned from these events are instrumental in the evolution of our safety program and can be used to prevent similar incidents in the future. Additionally, any spill of petroleum products into the river must be reported to the crane manager immediately. Employee behavior. Associated Terminals is an equal opportunity employer. We expect all team members to be treated equally. Employees are reminded that we have a zero tolerance policy with regard to any form of discriminatory behavior. This includes any jokes, critical remarks, postings, or any other forms of hostile treatment of team members as it relates to their race, religion, sexual orientation, gender, national origin, or accommodated handicaps. All employees are reminded that should they believe that they are being discriminated against, they are to report it to their crane manager or directly to the Human Resources Department.